Hello and welcome to another Timeless Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green land destruction deck that can potentially cast a turn to Stone Rain off for various one-mana ramp cards. And Stone Rain pairs quite nicely with Blood Moon. Blood Moon turning all non-basic lands into mountains. So if the opponent didn't fetch their basic land early on, they may be unable to cast any spells for the rest of the game. And then a Stone Rain can go after those one-off basic lands and try to shut the opponent out of the game basically. And then uh, to make that happen, we've got 12 one mana accelerants, including the Delighted Halfling and a Deathrite Shaman, which does require a fetch land in the graveyard to make extra mana. But as one, two creatures, at least they survive Orcish Bowmasters, which is another popular card in the meta. And then Deathrite has additional utility. Halfling can also make our spells uncounterable, which can also be relevant. And then we've got four copies of Utopia Sprawl, which does require a lot of basic forests or just forests in general for this to be effective. But especially if we're going to pair it with Blood Moon, we want to be enchanting a basic forest if possible, which is why we have six forests and then we've got eight more fetch lands that can get a basic forest early so we can cast a turn one utopia sprawl and set up our turn two blood moon of course an enchantment a lot less likely to be removed than our one mana creatures and then we've got a bit of interaction as well with a lightning bolt as well as a bone crusher giant which can stomp dealing two damage and then a four three that can try and close out the game while the opponent struggles to cast their spells then Fable of the Mirror Breaker, another great card to cast on turn 2 if possible, as we'll get the Shaman going, making additional treasure tokens, giving us a mana advantage. And then Chapter 2 can also be a way of discarding additional copies of Blood Moon if we happened to draw multiples. And then we also have some finishers here at 4 mana, a couple Planeswalkers. Chandra can add mana and take out creatures with a minus 3. And then the other plus 1 ability can provide more card advantage. Also pretty easy to get to the emblem in this deck once the opponent's unable to cast their spells. And then the minus 7 emblem can also get things over with pretty quickly. And then a Minsk and Boo can also close out the game very quickly after putting a bunch of plus one counters on our Boo token. And if the opponent has removal, we'll just get another one back. And then a minus two can also help close out games. And then we've got a full set of Karn, the Great Creator, which does a few things for us. It shuts down opposing artifacts, so the opponent won't be able to use treasure tokens, for instance, to fix their colors. And then Karn can also get more land destruction out of the sideboard in the form of the liquid metal coating, which can tap to turn an opposing permanent into an artifact in addition to its other types. So if we target an opposing land, it's now an artifact that can't tap for mana because of our Karn passive. And then once it's our turn again, we we can use coding on one of their lands and use Karn's plus one ability, turning that land into a zero zero creature, killing it on the spot. And then uh, that's another way of taking out a land turn after turn. And then a minus two can get more goodies, including Tormod Script if we need some graveyard hate. Haywire Might to deal with artifacts and enchantments can also be an answer to an opposing one ring, assuming Karn doesn't stick around since that will also shut it down. We've got a Pithing Needle to shut down opposing Planeswalkers and other activated abilities. We've got the Stone Brain, which can be important against certain combo decks, like maybe the Primeval Titan Ramp decks. Then we've got our own one ring to draw extra cards. And then Worm Coil Engine can also be a nice way to gain life against some more aggressive decks, like the Red Black Burn deck. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much our whole deck. We've got one Overgrown Tomb that we can fetch up in case we want to use Deathrite Shaman's Black activated ability. Although once we have a Blood Moon down, that's going to be a little more difficult. And then one Mountain in case we want to save ourselves a bit of damage against the aggressive decks by just fetching an untapped Mountain instead. Now we could also be playing with a companion if we forego Chandra. We could play with Gigantha as our companion, which may be a worthwhile trade-off. Now of course if we uh, play Gigantha we also have one fewer sideboard slot, so then Karn gets a little bit worse, so that's a trade-off you'll have to make. But for now, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, sign me up. Turn 1 Utopia Sprawl, turn 2 Blood Moon. So they need some pretty specific interaction to slow that down. And we'll see if they can fetch for a basic. Opponent playing Gigantha, so likely a domain deck, which is pretty cold to Blood Moon. So they might be debating which basic land to fetch. Nope, it's going to be Breeding Pool Deathrite. So Stone Rain is also an option now, but then we give Deathrite Shaman a landing graveyard to make mana, so we may as well just Blood Moon. And then next turn we can 
maybe stone rain, maybe bolts, but nope, turn to blood moon, assuming against domain is just lights out, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Alurus, and uh, yeah, our hand's okay. Missing some top-end cards to ramp into. Missing a Blood Moon. We'll see if our opponent fetches for a basic mountain and a channeler. So, I'm leaning Utopia Sprawl over Halfling, just less likely to be interacted with. Could also bolt the Channeler if I fetch like a Stomping Ground. Then next turn I could double Green One Drop, which is also reasonable. Don't know how effective Stone Rain is going to be here on the draw. Might want to save it for their Swamp if we draw Blood Moon. So yeah, I think I'm liking fetch for Stomping Ground. And then just bolt the channeler right now. And then next turn we also have the option of playing Utopia Sprawl and then double halfling. In case your opponent is on the uh, Underworld Breach combo deck. Good to know. So definitely looking at their swamp as something to stone rain. For now could go Utopia Sprawl after getting a Forest, and then I can just name Green and cast Double Halfling. And then next turn we can Stone Rain the Swamp, plus maybe Stomp. Finding a Deathrite Shaman to mess with our graveyard could also be important. Supplier attacking could imply, of course, Bowmasters to finish off the Halfling, so I'll just take it. It's got another Supplier. Make that three. So their graveyard's very full. They don't have Dark Ritual in the graveyard yet which is important. And now Karn gives us access to Tormod's Crypt if we'd like, which can exile the opponent's graveyard. Could also get Stonebrain to exile Breach, um, which is also an option, although they can still kind of win the fairway. And yeah, what happens if I just Stone Rain their Swamp? Can our opponent still combo next turn? They definitely can. If they go Ritual into a, a Breach, so I think I have to Karn here for Tormod Script just to be safe. And then I don't need to sacrifice it yet. Can't wait for them to cast a Breach. But at least we won't get comboed out as easily. Could see Bolt take care of Karn. Demonic Tutor. Okay. That happens. This a bolt for Karn, it is. Was to be expected. But if we can prevent our opponent from comboing, hopefully we'll draw some other win condition. And then for now we could get Bone Crusher going, could save it to answer Lurus. And then for now just to enrain the swamp. So that if we draw Blood Moon, they don't have access to black mana. And just pass it back. And then I could get Overgrown Tomb. Or I could get another basic forest. I guess I'm not in a hurry to fetch. Another tutor here, Diabolic Intent. That happens. One Dark Ritual, at least, in the graveyard so far. Did they mill their wing condition yet? Don't see tendrils, so that's still in their deck somewhere. And then uh, 
Yeah, I think I take my turn. Could keep Bonecrusher again as an answer to Lurus. Also, if they get a channeler going, we can clear their graveyard and stomp it. And then question is whether we fetch. I guess we do. And since Utopia Sprawl is naming green, we can just get an overgrown tomb. If we draw Blood Moon, that's fine. Another Bone Crusher. So do we just go on the beat town plan now? Stomp a couple suppliers. I guess I can start by stomping one of them. And then cast a Bone Crusher. And the halflings can attack. And dark rituals, so that resolves. Lurus in hand. And our opponent concedes Tormod's Crypt to doing too much work. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems keepable. We'll have to decide between Halfling and Utopia Sprawl what to lead with. Facing foothills. And a forest. And a Kami, so this is the Titan ramp deck. Okay, so Blood Moon is going to be effective, but uh, Stone Rain is just going to be a slight delay. At least we don't have to worry about Halfling getting answered. So, can play that, and then next turn we could Utopia Sprawl plus Stone Rain or Fable. Sylvan's Crying going for Stomping Ground, so not going for the Boseju at least. Okay, so Karn could also get Stone Brain to get Primeval Titan out of the opponent's deck. Can uh, fetch for another forest if we'd like, and then Utopia Sprawl, name red, still cast Stone Rain. Because I'm concerned about a natural order now, which is a reason to maybe bolt the Kami as well. But if we Stone Rain, then they won't be able to natural order yet, and then we'll get to forests, so Blood Moon will be more effective. Even though Castle Garenbrig can maybe help ramp out a Titan a turn sooner with Karn, that's hopefully not going to happen. Okay, and then now, if I play Karn, I wouldn't be able to do much else besides bolting Kami. And then by bolting Kami, we don't have to worry about natural order. Although I guess with Castle plus Citadel, they can actually cast a Titan next turn already. And is there anything I can do to stop that? Not really. Yeah, that's rough. So I guess it's just hope they do not have Titan in hand. Bolt Kami to play around Natural Order. And then Karn can get Stone Brain. So next turn we can extract Titan. And hope uh, we guessed correctly here. But yeah, if they had a Titan in hand, the only thing I could have done differently is stone raining the castle instead of the forest. So let's say our opponent does cast a titan next turn. And what's the best countermeasure? I mean, I guess worm coil to trade for it. So I could get worm coil now and stone brain next turn. Or we could get a liquid metal coating to start destroying their lands, but need to deal with the titan first. Yeah, I'll just get Stone Brain, and then next turn, hopefully get rid of Titan. Well, they're not slamming it down, so that's promising. So they likely have a natural order in hand that they weren't able to cast in time. And it looks like her opponent may have disconnected here. So I'm guessing the Stone Brain is going to be effective. And then Primeval Titan. And our opponent did have the natural order in hand as we suspected. 
can have a quick look at their deck composition, Titan of Industry potentially an answer to Blood Moon, and then kind of the usual suspects, couple forests, and then a Boseju. All right, let's get the Primeval Titan out of the deck. And now if we can get a Blood Moon down, that's going to be pretty effective. Karn can get probably a Liquid Metal Coating, so we can start blowing up their lands. And we can already cast it now. And with an upkeep stop we can prevent them from tapping it for mana for a turn. But uh, yeah, her opponent doesn't seem to be here anymore. So yeah, we got lucky that they didn't have a Titan in hand. Because with a Castle Garenbrake plus Sunken Citadel making two mana for the activation, they can actually cast it on just four lands. But now that we can take out a land turn after turn, it's going to be very difficult for the ramp deck to recover. So mission accomplished, even without Blood Moon. Just a good old Stone Rain. And then next turn we would be able to activate Coding, use Karn's plus one on their land after turning it into an artifact. And that's essentially a free Stone Rain each turn, and our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're missing a second land. So if our opponent doesn't cooperate with a fetch land, then we're stuck on one land for a while. Although if we draw our own fetch land, we're looking at a turn to Blood Moon or Stone Rain. So this one's tough. I guess I'll keep, since we can at least interact with Bolt. But uh, this one may not work out. Opponent doesn't have any companion either. Sacred Foundry. And a Fireblade Charger, so maybe a Hammer combo deck. And we actually top deck to fetch land. So I could Blood Moon, although opponent can still cast their red spells. We'll get a Forest. Without white mana... It's going to be a lot harder for the opponent to combo me, since they need the Sigardos aid or the one mana instant. So I think I do go for Blood Moon here. And hope they don't have basic planes in hand. And then next turn we can Stone Rain them. I guess we still need a land for that to work, otherwise it's just Bolt. But once we Stone Rain, there's a landing graveyard for Deathrite again. So maybe there was an argument for Stone Raining first, just so Deathrite has more fuel. Is their opponent just Monorat for now? But the threat of a turn 2 combo kill without white mana is not there anymore. Opponent did have the hammer. And now we get to Stone Rain. Plus Bolt if we'd like. Could also keep this turn rain until our opponent finds a planes, but uh, this seems fine. And then we can bolt at instant speed, trading death right for chargers, also an option. Although now I could play Chandra, which is probably better. So we can play Chandra, and then still have bolt available. Or we could plus work up towards an ultimate and then bolt charger. Yeah, let's just exile the top card. And then can't cast a Karn, two damage, pass a turn. Opponent's still on mono red. And a Kellen, okay. It's definitely worth taking out. But can take my turn first. And a Stomp from Bone Crusher is pretty good. So now, how about we add mana? Or do we still use the first plus one? I guess I can Stomp regardless. Yep. Find a Utopia Sprawl. Seems worth casting. Be easy. And then I'll just Stomp Kellen now, in case they have any pump spells. Pass with Bolt up. They can deal at least one damage to Chandra with Charger dying. 
to slow down an ultimate, and our opponent did find the planes, alright, so we could be in trouble now. Kemba's Outfitter lets them equip Colossus Hammer for just one mana now. So we'll have to take out all their creatures one by one. Starting with Fireblade Charger. Alright, so good thing we had a few bolts left over. Just gotta hope they don't have any creatures left. Opponent went face with a Fireblade Charger, so... Next turn, at least, we'll be able to ultimate Chandra if we want to. Still gonna run out Bone Crusher, And then Death Rites. Can uh, gain some life back. Seems more relevant. Keep land in hand in case we draw Fable so we can discard. Alright, opponent does have another creature, so they get to equip Hammer for free. 13-13 Kemba. There's a Bolt, so if I make an Emblem, Bolt is essentially 8 damage. And then we just need to chum block and try and survive versus keeping Chandra in play for an extra turn. I think we just get the Emblem while we can, even though an active Planeswalker could be worth protecting here. And then we'll just pass for now. Opponent could have some sort of fling effect to deal 13 upstairs. Now fighter class could maybe get some life gain equipment. Yeah, that's bad. If they have Shadow Spear, they can give Trample and Life Link. Oh no. This is a disaster. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. Bolt plus Emblem is 8 damage, but we're not gonna outrace Kemba. If I take out my own creature, they still trample, so we can't deny the life gain. Yeah, that one planes opened the floodgates, so maybe should have held on to the Stone Rain after all. Although they still had the chance to play the Outfitter, which is what made the real difference. If I triple block plus Bolt, that's 8 plus 6, 14. I guess we can trade. Might be our best bet. And just hope they run out of creatures. But now every creature is gonna have both Colossus Hammer and Shadow Spear to go with it. We've got a long way to go with this Chandra emblem, but at least we made it. They could have uh, taken out Chandra in the meantime. And Thalia, yeah, that's another creature. So that's probably the end of the line now. Yeah, Kamba's Outfitter is one of those alchemy cards. That's pretty good, and now a thud to close out the game. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing a fetch land to set up a turn to Blood Moon or Stone Rain. I think we still try it. Facing Yurion, so some sort of control deck or uh, maybe an Omnath deck. Just gonna hope to get lucky and resolve an early Blood Moon. Opponent already has the basic forests for Grazer, so maybe it's a Titan Ramp deck after all. Can't quite play my 3-drop here because of no fetch lane. So we'll uh, just keep Bolt available, I guess. Now Blood Moon is pretty effective against us, actually, since we're missing basic forest to go with it. Poto now fetching. I don't think they're putting us on a Blood Moon deck. Gets Watery Grave. So now Deathrite's got a fetch line to go with it. Probably no need to bolt Grazer. 
Although it's possible they've got natural order in there. Okay, so we'll try Blood Moon for starters. Or do we prefer Stone Rain? Stone Rain the forest. I think we Blood Moon. And then we'll draw forest eventually. Nice. Spiral, no land, so opponent stuck on two. Although they can island cycle, Halorian revealed. That's nice. So now we need a land for Stone Rain. And a search for Ascanta. Okay, so drawing a forest is good. Could get a Fable going, or we can just get rid of their blue or green mana. Still haven't completely figured out what they're up to. I guess it's a ramp deck. I think Forest is probably scarier than Island since that is more likely to answer the Blood Moon. And Ascanta doesn't do much with a Blood Moon in play other than making red mana. So we'll pass it back. And brainstorm, not good enough. Soul Guide Lantern for Graveyard Hates, we don't mind. So there's a forest to cast Karn next turn, although they might have a memory lapse here. So we could go for Fable. But it's not like I'm really casting anything else, so we'll give Karn a shot. Would also shut down the Soul Guide Lantern. And there's Memory Lamp, so we'll try again next turn. Alright, so... Opponent's just blue-red for the time being. So I have to imagine Blood Moon is doing overtime. And Death Rite they also cannot cast. I guess with Search for Ascanta, they could put more lands in the graveyard to let Deathrite make colored mana. It's a good thing we took out the forest. Although we also have a bolt for a potential Deathrite. Alright, Soul Guide gets sacrificed before Karn shows up. I guess we could try Fable instead of uh, Karn. In case they have another memory lapse, we could still stomp at least. And that resolves. And we'll pass it back. A Bowmaster's also uncastable. And now might be time to bolt the Grazer. So we can start attacking. Even though it will help with Ascanta transforming, they didn't seem interested. Okay. Could get rid of Bone Crusher. It's still a threat, to be fair. I'm not sure if we need Bolts. It's not a bad card, but we've got a Bone Crusher, I guess. Okay, so Shaman attacks. And then we can try Karn. That resolves. And we probably start by getting a uh, liquid metal coating, which I can play and then target their islands. And their upkeep. And then next turn we can take it out with Karn. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a potential turn 2 Blood Moon against Gigantha, which could be the domain deck. So sign me up. They could, of course, have removal for death rites. But hopefully they just play creature. And then Stomping Grounds, probably what we want. Okay. 
So a lightning bolt is what we want to avoid. That's probably their only one mana removal for death right. And we're in the clear. Opponent will be able to fetch a basic forest here in response to the Blood Moon. So they still have a little bit of colored mana left. But so be it. I guess it's possible they can get a Stubborn Denial and counter the Blood Moon. Which could have been a reason to wait a turn. Assuming Blood Moon's game over, but no, nope, opponent gets forest. So no Stubborn Denial in hand. Maybe because they had a breeding pool in hand. And now Kavu, just a 2-2, two -two, pretty manageable. So, and what's next? There's still one landing graveyard for death right, so I want to use it sparingly. I guess we can play Fable, get that going. And then we can still bolt the Kavu. Is there any other creature we worry about? I guess her opponent can still cast Ragavan. And then uh, Wild Nakadal is going to be a 2-2. They can eventually cast maybe a Minsk Ambu. That's going to be pretty effective. But I think developing Fable makes sense. And then we'll keep Bolt available. Can see if they do anything before attacking. Possible they have their basic planes in hand. So do we let the Kavu attack? We'll let them potentially exile the land or discard and draw. Yeah, I guess we'll just kill it now. Still have a stomp in case they play their own death rites. Although again, without lands and graveyard, it's not like it's going to fix their mana. Opponent's got their own bolt, fair enough. And uh, Nishoba Brawler, and that's enough for a concession. Yeah, Blood Moon's pretty rough for their domain deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a keepable hand. Halfling hopefully turn to either Fable or Stone Rain. Although against blue-black, I'm not counting on it. Either way, fetch a forest. Unless it gets stifled, I guess. Fetching for a forest might give away that we're on the Blood Moon plan a little bit. But her opponent gets a Watery Grave for Gaze, so they're on the Graveyard deck here. Okay, so don't expect removal for Halfling, but if her opponent's got a turn to Glimpse, they can already put a bunch of stuff in play that we're not going to be able to stop. So yeah, our opponent's probably not running any basic lands. Alright, they do have a Swamp, so that's going to be our target for Stone Rain. But a turn to Glimpse is what we wanted to avoid, and looks like they hit the jackpot. Triple Creeping Chill. Silver Smote Ghoul, times two coming back, and an Amalgam. So yeah, this game's already over on turn two. No, we're not coming back from this. Even if I Stone Rain, we're uh, still taking 10 damage, and that's before I shock myself. Bone Crusher just trades here, so yeah, that's... Uh, Turn to Glimpse, doing its thing, basically. GG's. Of course, they got pretty fortunate to mill triple Creeping Chill and find all those creatures, but uh, yeah, sometimes that's all they need. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with not the most exciting hand, no turn to Blood Moon or anything, but uh, still pretty good. Got our early ramp into a Minsk Ambu. Against turn one Swamp, yeah, let's just go Utopia Sprawl. And we can name a red. And then next turn still Deathrite plus Halfling, or one of them alongside Stomp. So this is a mono black deck with Dark Ritual into a 4-drop. Chalice on one, okay. Well, it's pretty good. Shuts down Deathrite and Halfling, but we can stomp Packrat at least. 
can just do that now before they activate it. If only we had a halfling in play, could make our spells uncounterable, but I guess our legends aren't one mana. Next turn we get Minsk and Boo in play. And uh, Karn's also interesting. If I plus on Chalice, I think it just destroys it since mana value is zero. Although I think I prefer Minsk and Boo here. Pretty strong in these kind of mid rangey battles. And then I'll hang back to protect my Planeswalker. Happy to trade. And then next turn we could maybe Karn the Chalice. Don't need to worry about Fatal Push anymore, but they might have some two mana removal. Opponent passes. Okay, so step one probably plus. A march for x equals 5, getting rid of some collective brutalities, okay. That's fine. And then Karn, just double checking here that this works the way I think it does. Power and toughness equal to its mana value, yep, that should work. And then I'll still play Death Rites afterwards. Okay, and now we're pretty far ahead with two four mana planeswalkers taking over. And that's enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're just missing a land to set up a turn two Blood Moon. I'm gonna have faith. So we'll get a forest, and then Utopia's Prowl name red. And hope for the best. Went with a stomping ground and a Kami, so they're on the Titan ramp deck. And we get to Blood Moon on turn two, which is pretty good. They don't have a basic forest in play, so hopefully it stays that way. All right, and now we can play either Chandra or Karn. Priority is still probably to stone brain their primeval titan. And uh, I guess Chandra giving me extra mana for next turn is helpful. Although it's not enough mana to be able to stone brain activate. Could still favor Karn minus get stone brain. They can hit it for one. And then next turn could just stone brain activate. Nah, I guess Chandra's fine. I'll add mana and just stomp the Kami so they can natural order it if they somehow deal with a Blood Moon. Forest plus Boseju could do it. So we'll add mana. Play Karn. And that's enough for a concession. Either get Stone Brain or get uh, some other win condition. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Lurus as companion. We've got Utopia Sprawl into Blood Moon, even Stone Rain for basic. But if our opponent gets ahead on board in the meantime, we could still lose. And a thought sees we'll have a look. So we've got redundant three drops and redundant one drops, although Deathrite will have an easier time destroying. So they might go for Utopia Sprawl, or if they can beat Blood Moon, take Blood Moon. Alright, Blood Moon's gone. So then probably set up for a turn two Stone Rain, as opposed to playing Death Rites. But we could always pivot and Lightning Bolt plus Death Rite next turn. And then, so they might be on the burn deck, but typically don't see Thoughtseize. It's gonna take Stone Rain. So, might still be the combo Breach deck after all. So, we can play Death Rites and uh, I guess uh, play a Fetch Land. Okay, 
and then hope to top deck a relevant 4 drop. Opponent does have a companion, whereas we do not, so that's the drawback here of playing Chandra and not playing Giganta as companion. They know about our bolts. Probably get an overgrown tomb here, unless we need double red Croxa. Can get rid of a land. Uh, they're pretty close to escaping it too. And a channeler. So that we can bolt, but that will make it easier for Croxa to escape if they've got uh, black mana for it. Probably still gonna take it out and then hope to just find Blood Moon or Stone Rain off the top. And that means probably just getting a mountain here, don't need stomping ground. Halflings nodded. Okay, so we're in trouble if our opponent can escape Croxa. A Lurus in hand. And a Fable. So play Fable. Next turn opponent can play a Lurus and maybe get back a one drop with a land or go for Croxa, we'll see. Another channeler. Okay, Karn can shut off the graveyard. So that seems good. And then I imagine we go for Tormod script. Now we could also dream big and go for like a one ring or something. Hoping they don't make me discard it in the meantime. But if they escape Croxa they can. So the only guaranteed value is with Tormod script or a two drop if we attack with the Shaman. Which maybe I should have attacked with the Shaman. And then if they block with Channeler by exiling the graveyard with Tormod script, we actually uh, end up trading there. I guess I can still do that now. I guess if they have uh, Unholy Heat in hand, we get punished for not activating Karn right away, so... Opponent blocks. All right. Did not get punished. Now I am forced to just use Tormod script right away, but was probably going to do that no matter what. If the opponent's land was a fetch land, we maybe could have uh, responded to it, but otherwise Croxa would have been pretty dangerous if they just went with an untapped land. Alright, they had a lightning bolt to finish off Karn. Fair enough. When the play is Lurus. But we top deck the stomp, so that's lucky. And now we can try and pull ahead with our reflection. Arcanist can get back bolt, so that's pretty good. And there's our own bolt, so a couple lucky top decks here for sure. Just take it out now, I suppose. And then I can activate Reflection of Kiki Jiki on the Bone Crusher in the opponent's end step, so it will persist throughout my next turn. And then we can potentially present lethal. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so we get to see our land destruction deck in action, and Blood Moon is a very effective card in the meta, especially when people don't respect it by fetching their basics early, so you do get some free wins that way. Now you also have matchups where the opponent has the early interaction or sees it coming and can kind of plan accordingly, or sometimes opposing decks only need one or two lands to operate and then the land destruction plan may not be all that effective. Those are the games we typically lose, but then there's also kind of the rare game where 
there. Our land destruction is somewhat effective, but doesn't completely shut down what the opponent is capable of doing. And those are the games with a bit more back and forth that could still go either way. And those are usually the more fun games to play since it's not decided by turn two. So yeah, all in all, not the most interactive deck in the meta, but if you enjoy land destruction and keeping people from casting their spells, this deck may be for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.